So journalists aren't always creative or innovative enough to see stories, to really pitch it to the editors who don't want just another human rights story. So what else could you, they're not thinking through the, the hook on what else they could tell about that particular story, about that particular worker who's in a bad situation. Uh, what are the other factors that they can report on? A good example that I have is a, a very <clears throat> well-known Ugandan journalist was working in the Gulf, and he realized that workers are falling sick. And you keep hearing about workers dying, workers falling sick, and he went and spent time with them when they were having lunch. And then he realized that they don't have a, sp they cook 24 hours before they actually eat the meal, and they can't store it properly. So no one is paying attention to what they're eating. And they're eating stale food or bad food instead of going hungry. And that was a very interesting story because it was picked up by others. It's something you connect with. It's food you eat, you want it fresh. And then you suddenly realize that a whole group of people who don't have that privilege of having basic food that's not stale or spoiled. So finding those kind of stories um, are really uh, important. هنا نتحدث عن العمل عن الشغال على مسألة مسألة العمل القسري نحن في تونس أولا في القانون العمل القسري يدخل ضمن مسألة الاتجاب الأشخاص فالصحفي اليوم وهذا الموضوع هو موضوع ساعة العمل القسري يعني أصبح أصبحت جريمة موجودة في تونس ونراها تقريبا بصفة يوميا ليس في تونس فقط وإنما في بعض الدول أيضا الأخرى فاقتراح مواضيع على رئيس التحرير من أجل أنك تقدم روبورتاج أو تقدم تحقيق حول العمل القسري الموضوع موجود يمكن العمل اقتراح مواضيع حول العمل القسري في مجال في المنازل العمل القسري وخاصة في مجال البناءات العمل القسري أيضا في مجالات أخرى مثل في المطاعم في الزراعة في العمل أيضا الصيد في البحر وفي الحقيقة رؤساء التحرير في تونس يرغبون في الاشتغال على مثل هذه المواضيع لذلك عندما تتحدث إلى رئيس التحرير يعني عملية الإقناع تكون بصفة سهلة ويكون متحمس أكثر من الصحفي في حد ذاته في كونه يدعمك من ناحية أنك تمشي تقدم وتحقق في هذه المسألة when I talk to the editor, he will ask me the first question. What is fresh in that regime? What is new? Why should I be bothered? Why should the readers read this story? So I have to find a fresh angle for the same issue or, or I have to talk to many people to find out uh, what can be new in this story. What is it that's current about this particular forced labor or fair recruitment story? That's what we're looking at uh, to give it context. We don't always get it and we understand the constraints that journalists face because data isn't freely available. Um, to get a quote from the government is not the easiest thing uh, from the officials, but at least to try, to try and reach out to them and get all. And additionally, the editor should also be aware of the uh, rights and uh, forced labor and uh, uh, fair recruitment practices. If he is not aware of those things, then I have to teach him what it is, what is fair, what is unfair and all. Um, then I have to uh, detail him about the human interest, uh, the reader's interest and the importance of the issue. And uh, then I have to tell him the emotional thing, what they're going through, the workers, affected workers are going through and all. So it's like an emotional thing which I pitch in, then he may agree. Okay, there is a human angle. People are talking, affected people are talking. So the read, people always like to read about people only in newspapers. So that's the always the tool I used to tell him when I pitch the story. Was uh, this is about people, and people will like to like to read about people only. So we can do that story. So he agrees for that. It's really important to have a human voice. I want the human interest part of it but there, it has to be backed up with enough data enough of expert views and also something that's different that doesn't make the story jaded where the reader is like okay I've read this a hundred times I'm not gonna read this again mm -hmm. uh, so looking for more current information uh, context and whatever is happening at the moment I'm a Filipino journalist, so you have to understand that as a Filipino, I am reporting on Filipino issues. And this is, that's why I guess these stories are so important to me, to capture the whole picture of migration, the good, the bad, and the in-betweens. And when I talk about the good things and the in-between stories, I make it a point to look for community stories, or those little stories about how, let's say, these women in Doha, Qatar, um, sometimes they spend a lot of time in the migrant shelter, 
they're waiting for cases to be resolved, they're waiting for uh, a way to get back home. They have a lot of free time, a lot of idle time. And what the Philippine Embassy does in Doha at least, they give them uh, an opportunity to learn livelihood skills. And one of them was a baking shop that I covered. So I did a little story with a small video, a short video rather, on um, how these women are being trained to do baking by another Filipino migrant worker. And it seems like such a small story or inconsequential almost, but I know how important this message is to the community. Number one, it shows that uh, there are Filipinos helping other Filipinos. Number two, it's also kind of like showing how our migrants, even in situations of distress, are finding ways to improve their life or to uplift their life. And also I have to give it, that, uh, I have to, give it to the Philippine government, who is also trying to find a way to make uh, productive use of the time that these women have on their hands.